What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. This will be the swooping the news, um, bringing it back, especially for this week. I feel like I had to say a couple of things, but let's get into it. Before we do jump straight into it, remember, all my merchandise is out. You can find t-shirts, jumpers at thecarlsondraftshirts.com.au. That's down below. You can find stickers, mugs, and Swoop Luke caps soon. They'll be at swoopluke.com. The mugs just came in. They look fantastic. I don't have one right here, but you know what they look like. Also, I'm recording off my very new camera. Um, it's a Zony ZV-1. So let's see how this goes. Hopefully it looks good. But let's get into the news. The first bit of Collingwood news is that Daniel McStay could be coming to the Pies. We know he's a free agent at the end of the year. Brisbane have offered him five years. He is a forward. Last year, he kicked 27 or 28 goals. Um, he kind of plays that second or third fiddle, not that big key full forward like a Cameron um, or a Hawkins or a Rewalt or a Tom Lynch or anything like that. Kind of like a Majek. We've got to remember that Majek is getting uh, older in age. Nathan Kruger is still developing. We don't really have that big key forward or any sort of key forward other than them. Mason Cox is, you know, Coming up to probably his last year, next year. I think he's 32 this year or 32 next year. Um, so we need someone who can be in between drafting a new forward and um, the Majacek, sort of the older forwards that we have at the moment. Uh, Daniel McStay is, I think he's 27, so he fits that age bracket. Collingwood apparently, according to the age, have offered him a six-year, $600,000 a year deal. So six six is a 36, that's $3.6 million dollars over six years. I think, look, we know that there is a forward tax. Anyone who is a forward gets an extra 150000 or so dollars added to them because they are so rare that they get traded or they come into the market that everyone wants to snap him up. So I think you're paying a little bit extra for a forward. He, is he worth 600000 Probably not, um, but you have to pay a little bit of overs to kind of get this player in. Is he going to kick 60 goals a season, win a season off his own boot like Hawkins and, and Kerno and, and Mackay do and stuff like that. No, not at all. But like I said, he's going to be that development forward. Should we get him? Look, if we have the money, why not? Um, I don't see anyone else coming. Like Everyone's like, oh, Mitch Lewis, Mitch Lewis. I would love, love Mitch Lewis from the Hawthorne uh, Football Club at Collingwood. But do I see that happening? No, not at all because they're going to want two first rounders and stuff like that. The only thing that would deter me um, from Daniel McStay is if Jordan Dugowie does leave, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, on free agency, on big money, we will most likely get a first round pick after our current first round. So say we finish um, with, a, with a top 10 pick, so say we finish whatever it is, uh, and we get pick number 10, for example, our next combo pick would be pick 11. If we do then... Um, decide to sign a free agent on big money as well, we lose that combo pick. So it doesn't become at the first round or the end of the first round. It might go into the second round um, pick because you're then signing a free agent. Classic um, AFL rules. So that would deter me a little bit. Um, but I think... Is deter the right word? I hope so. <laughs> um, but look, I think signing him will be a good idea. Like I said, Majek's not getting any younger. Cox is not getting any younger, then that really just leaves Kruger, Johnson, and Henry. We do need that big, you know, to take the first or second um, defender. I don't think McStay will be that guy. So, McStay and McPie, let me know your thoughts down below. Second piece of news, of course, uh, the Ginevan and IQ TikTok news. Look, I haven't really said much about this besides a little bit on um, social media. But, you know, I wouldn't be a, a Collingwood channel if I didn't uh, sort of talk about this. So that's why I want to jump on now before my usual uh, match review goes up on Saturday. Um, look, this TikTok thing, I think, has been blown out of the water. And I know, look, um, I kind of get it in the sense that we shouldn't be sort of um, raiding girls, right? Like, that's just a very 7-year-old, 10-year-old, 11, teenager thing to do. But... Everyone does do it. This trend is on TikTok. I've done it. I did it for an hour at brunch the other day. Uh, you know, there are 10, but they fart in their sleep. Something something like that. Look, I, I get it. We all do it. We literally all do it. Should they have come out and apologized, though? Um, 
they had to. It, it was blown up that big. Did it deserve an apology? Not really. It was just a TikTok trend. I watched the whole three-minute video. They should have just apologized for it being very cringe. Like, it was cringe. They're, they're teenagers, bro. Gittemann's 19. I think IQ's 20 or 21 or something like that. Um, like I said, this TikTok trend's going around. It was fictitious people. Um, and previous to that, IQ and his girlfriend did uh, the exact same video, and that didn't do the rounds on social media. I think it was blown up because of the Jordan Degoe thing uh, as well. So that leads on to it. The club really had no sort of leg to stand on. What 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 could they have done? The apology was good, though. It, it, in the end, it did need an apology, I guess. Um, so they came out and, and apologized. But, you know, I don't think if this happened six weeks ago... This doesn't get an apology and doesn't get blown up uh, as it is. But, you know, it, I guess it teaches us that we have to be mindful of what we post on social media. And, you know, I post a lot of crap. I talk a lot of crap on social media. I get a lot of crap on social media as well. Um, so, you know, I've talked about the bullying and stuff previously. As long as you're a nice person, you know, uh, nothing, nothing really comes from it, from being nice. Like... You be nice, people are nice back to you. Don't be an ass. Don't be mean. Uh, you know, you know that sort of jazz. But it does teach us to be mindful of social media, and you know, hopefully the AFL kind of do a little bit more training around social media because that's the day and age we live in. People are born with uh, a phone in their hands, so we have to educate better. Um, but that's that TikTok saga done, dusted. Let's move on. Now, the Jordan Degoe situation. So, I definitely haven't said a lot about this one. Again, same like the TikTok thing. I needed to come and say my piece on it, and what better than a news segment. So, we know as of today, which is Thursday the 23rd of June, Jordan Degoe is not playing against the GWS Giants because he's taking personal leave. Now, if you've been following this saga for the last week or so, you know that it started because he was videoed uh, in Bali, having a good time, drinking or whatever he may be doing. He doesn't doesn't know if we don't know if it's alcohol related. I don't think not that I've read. Um, and then you see an undisclosed hand pulling down uh, uh, a lady's top, um, and then a bit more kissing, whatever it may be. So people have to understand. Now again, this is all just my opinion and my thoughts. People have to understand that he wasn't getting told off for going out. Um, to Bali and party, right? I saw Ginevan, I saw IQ, Will Kelly, all these other players, they were drinking daiquiris, they were going out, everybody goes out, right? And that's fine. He went to Bali, a little bit questionable, um, you know, Collingwood came out and said, yeah, you know, he's fine, he's 26 year old, we, we, we approve it, blah, blah, blah. They're not really going to come out and say, yeah, look, no, we don't approve it, um, but what can you do? Of course, they're going to sort of back him, and, you know, I'd back him in as well, d you know, despite his past, should Jordan Degoe have said no to go into Bali and stayed here, went to whatever, Port Douglas with Braden Maynard or hung out with Scott Pendlebury's family for a week or whatever it may have been? Yeah, probably. Um, I would have liked to have seen that sort of maturity, but when he did go over to Bali, he was training with um, local Bali uh, Aussie Rules football teams, which is awesome. Again, let him do what he wants to do that way. He can go out if he wants to. He can go, you know, for a couple of days, whatever it may be. He comes back. Like, again, he should have stayed here. I would have preferred him to, to stay here. Not because of what happened, but just because, you know, he's got vying for a contract. There was probably an $850,000 contract in front of him. That's not there anymore. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But he should have stayed here, trained here, had a good time here. But again, he wants to go to Bali. Power to him. Now... What the big, big commotion was about, not about the drinking, not about the partying, it was about pulling down that um, top. The girl um, came out after the fact uh, and said, you know, there's nothing to see here, it's all good. And yeah, look, it might be all good to her, but it's not a good look. And you can see why the media and journos were kind of up in arms about it, because that is not a good look. That is... I don't care if it was his girlfriend or, you know, I wouldn't do that to my girlfriend or or anything like that. Um, just anyone in in general. I wouldn't even do that to a guy, you know, if I'm at a, a club or, or whatever it may be. Um, it, it, it is pretty gross, that act. Um, it's not a good look at all, especially with his, with his past indiscretions and stuff like that. It is definitely, definitely not a good look. And that's 
that's why, you know, the the club was just up in arms and and all this sort of thing. So it's not because he went to to Bali. The club was fine. Let him to go to go to Bali. It was that action, and it was very 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 gross. Um, it was definitely his hand. Uh, it would have come out and said that it wasn't if if it wasn't by now. Um, but it was definitely uh, his hand. Um, and yeah, just a gross action, and, and, and nobody, nobody is is for that. Um, like I said, it's just, it's not a good look at all. It's not a good look at all. And people are like, oh, but you know, put your phones away or, or whatever. Don't do that. Don't do that. Right? Just don't do that. Um, those are my thoughts on that. On Collingwood's fine suspension, twenty five thousand dollars suspended fine on a good behaviour. Um, promise that's fine that's like Collingwood just you know kind of going okay here's the fine tone stuff up or this $25,000 will be coming out of your pocket um they let him play okay that's that's that now what I want to talk about is the media journos everything that's um happened there there was um there was just Whew, articles on articles on articles on articles. I reckon there was about 12 or so articles a day about this. And look, I, I get it. I don't get that there was so many articles, so many rehashing the same story, the same commentators. You saw Eddie Maguire yesterday. You know, Mark Robert Robinson, the other, a couple days before it, or the day when it came out, he was like, you know, that's fine. And then a couple days later, he's like, nah, you know, that whatever it may be. The media has a TMZ style way of reporting at the moment. There are some really good journos out there, um, really good journos out there, but some just want story first, um, facts later. And we saw that when Collingwood released their statement, a lot of journos didn't read it properly. They said the guy was fined, uh, fined and suspended for the whole year. Of course, that wasn't true. A lot of journos, I think there was about six or seven of them um, deleted their tweets. So, at the moment, the TMZ style of story first, ask questions later, you know, it's, it's been rife in the AFL for so long. And we talk about mental health. We talk about Spud Frawley. And yes, look, um, Jordan DeGuy put himself into this position. I don't deny that at all. But, geez louise, it's the get of an, an, an IQ one as well. Media handing them. They're getting um, stopped as they go to their car. Like they did something terribly wrong, which they didn't at all. Uh, the one I can remember now, Jason Horn Francis, you know, we stay at the kangaroos, we go. At one point before this Dugowie thing, there's four or five articles about him a day and about the kangaroos. And, you know, we're a big advocate for mental health and I'm a big advocate for, for mental health and especially men's mental health. Um, and this, th the media doesn't help. And Jordan Dugowie, whether you, whether you um, agree with it or don't, release that enough is enough, how hashtag enough is enough statement on his Instagram about um, media journos and, and what they're doing and stuff. And, you know, to a point, I, I do agree with him. Um, it was, it, it wasn't, it wasn't nice to see, <sighs> it just wasn't not like, we talk about mental health and now he has, has to have a week off. And I think, Yes, it was a gross act, don't get me wrong. The girl saying, you know, there's nothing to see here definitely helped him out a lot. But just just that constant barrage of of articles just far out. It was it was nuts. As a as a Collingwood supporter, it was nuts. As a man, it, it was nuts as well. Just like we, we advocate, like I said, so much for men's mental health. And I wasn't even doing wonders for wonders. We'll have just seeing it, seeing it, seeing it, seeing it all over Twitter, all over Instagram. Um, it was it was nuts. And you know, what's done is done now. And I just hope that Jordan. I just hope that something has finally dropped. And he says, "Look, that was this is it. This is probably his last chance at the club." They rescinded a um, a deal. It sounds like a two year deal, and then an add on for two years. If incentives are met, it might have been eight hundred thousand dollars a year. They have taken that back. Now it might be four years at five hundred thousand or something like that. It's not that they're not going to give him another deal. It's just that that deal, that good deal, is not there anymore. Um, so look, it's been a crazy week to be a Collingwood supporter, um, and I, I do hope that whether you like him or not, you have to, you know to take personal leave after all this, 
I hope his mental health, I hope, I hope he's okay. Um, because, you know, you wouldn't wish that upon your, your worst enemy. Um, that sort of mental health battle. And yes, he did bring it on himself. I'm not, I'm not saying he didn't, but you wouldn't wish that upon your, your worst enemy. And I've been through it. I've, I've been through, you know, a lot. I'm, I'm 30 this, I'm 30 next month. And, you know, there were times when I just finished school. So that was 2010 closing out, maybe 2011 where, you know, I had very, very, very intrusive thoughts, um, and, you know, my parents and stuff, I don't know if they knew, knew the extent of it, we kind of chatted about it and stuff, but look, I have very intrusive thoughts at times, um, and it's it's not a good place to be, and I wasn't getting hounded by media journals every single day, so I can only imagine what these footballers go through, and not just um, to go in, not just Isaac and IQ, or Jason Horn Francis, all these um, sort of place, you know, the Archie Perkins thing when it's like he didn't want to go um, interstate and stuff like that, hounded, hounded, hounded. I get that we want a story, but, you know, at what cost, what what do these players, you know, have to do to themselves for the media to go, okay, let's let's take a step back and let's get some integrity back uh, into reporting um, and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, look, what I am just want to end this with is, Look out for everyone around you. Ask them how they're going. You know, chuck a smile to a stranger. You know, give us give us stranger a thumbs up or, or whatever it may be. Um, the world will be better with a lot more kindness, a lot more um, equality, and a lot more love for for everyone. Um, and you know that that just helps us. That just helps us through. Um, and I just wanted to leave you guys on that note. And you know, look, these are all my thoughts, all my rumblings. I don't write them down, so um, they're probably not coherent. And I'll happily, you know, uh, if you leave some comments down below and uh, something that you didn't agree with or, or you want to have a chat about something or DM me or stuff, I will definitely um, explain a lot more better, a lot more better, a lot better. Uh, but these are, yeah, just again, just my thoughts off the top of my dome. Um, whether you agree or not dis or not agree, leave them down in the comments. Let's have a chat. Let's open up um, the floor to it. Uh, but yeah, look, smile more, love more. And um, I'll see you guys for the match review. But until then, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, double shackers. I'll sweep you later.